Hi everyone, welcome to VLSA Academy. So far we have understood about floor planning and placement stage related concepts. In case if you are visiting this video directly and without watching any previous videos, then we recommend you to go through the series once. If you wish to evaluate your knowledge, then you can check the interview questions of the floor planning and placement stage. That is link of that also is given in the description below. In this video, we are going to talk about introduction to CTS. So from now onwards, we will discuss about clock synthesis and further physical design stage related concepts. If you have seen previous video, then you must have come across this VLSI spectrum at least once, which we designed for you. We have already discussed about floor planning and placement stage related inputs and what sanity checks are needed at the particular stage. For example, these are the checks that we have already discussed and these are related to the floor planning. To so that we can qualify the floor plan good enough to proceed for placement. You can pause the video and review these checks for the floor planning stage. Similarly, these are the checks that we do in the pre-CTS stage before we proceed for the CTS. If you pay attention, first check relates to floor planning. That is, once your macro placement and pin placement is correct, we must ensure that there is no cell overlaps. There should not be any cell overlaps and all cells are legal and cell standard cell placement is done correctly. After that we check for timing. So timing should be under control and your congestion should be under control and your design should be verified with respect to the RTL. So RTL wise your design should be aligned or your synthesis netlist. With respect to your synthesis netlist your design should be aligned correctly. So these are the pre-CTS check that we do before proceeding for the clock tree synthesis. The next question that comes to the mind is what is the goal of CTS or what are we trying to achieve in CTS. So by doing the clock tree synthesis we are trying to balance the clock skew to an acceptable range. Clock is a high fan out net and it is necessary to balance the clock skew properly. If we do not do that then we might run into congestion timing or power issues later on. A very commonly asked question in the interview is what are we trying to achieve by doing CTS first and then routing the other signal. Why do we do that? So if you see the options are for you, clock buffers take more area. So we do the CTS because of that first. Or second option is clock pin of flip flop is congestion prone. So because of that, we do the CTS first. Or C option is to prevent the latch up issues. We do the clock synthesis first. Or last option is clock has more load and power critical that is why do we, we do the CTS first. If you know the answer then please do write your answer in the comment section. We would like to hear your answers from you. Well the correct answer for this question is D. If you have mentioned the D then we, that is very good. So let us move on now to the next concept and that is before CTS if you see your clock tree would look something like this where your flops are placed and from the clock source the clock would be ideally routed. Ideally routed means there will be placement of standard cells done and clock tree synthesis would not be built. It will be only ideally mentioned like a fly line. But after CTS is done, then you will see that clock is buffered and proper routing of the clock from the clock source till the clock point will be done. That is all for this video. We will come up with more concepts in further videos such as how the clock tree is built and how the clock skew is balanced and other concepts. Till then, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel and give your important feedback in the comment section. Thank you.